<laughs> and thank you for making the congregation today. Um, you might have questions about my costume. I decided to pick something that would enrage and baffle both right and left, it would raise questions in all parts of the political spectrum. Yes, I'm going for Purim as a Jew. <laughs> and just as the Purim spiel in Bethlehem doesn't stay in one place, the Jewish tradition doesn't stay in one place. And as you know, many Jews, many of our brethren and stressren and transren and queerren and whatever, um, well, more of the brethren, actually, support Trump. And so it stands to reason that a committee of Jews has written the Trump Tanakh. And I'd like to recite for you in the original Lotion Kodesh and the original Trump English um, some selections. Um, of course, uh, this being Beth Am, there'll be a, a lot less text and a lot more commentary. Um, <laughs> So the first book of the Trump Tanakh is Breshit. Breshit bara tapuz at the kotel de Taaretz. In the beginning, created the orange, the wall, and the earth. <laughs> then we pass quickly on to the book of Exodus, which starts like this. Well, it doesn't start, but it's got a part that goes like this. Az yashir ben shepibo, et hashir hazalatram. Sing ye, sang, then sang Ben Shapiro to Trump, saying, Trump sang Isis and his, fo and his forces in the sea. Then, of course, the big deal in the book of Exodus is the Ten Commandments, Thunder and Lightning, Maestro! I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But actually, all gods are great, and you know, they're great gods on both sides. And so, <laughs> And some of the tiki gods are just fine. <laughs> More commandments uh, in the Trump Tanakh go like this. Kaved et bibecha viet meganecha. Thou shalt honor Bibi un Megan McCain. Or maybe I should say Megan McCohen. And then one of the most important of the Ten Commandments. Kaved zacho et yamatamut lakot Honor Israel Independence Day to keep it holy. <laughs> and the final Ten Commandment of the ones I remember in the Trump Tanakh goes like this. Lo tirzah et alabanim. Don't kill white people. <laughs> Passing quickly on, you know there's a whole second part of the Tanakh, the, the writings and the orders and the whatever they're called. And among them is the book of Job, or as the Trump Jews pronounce it, the book of why don't those immigrants go out and get a job. <laughs> I don't have time, of course, to go through the whole Trump Tanakh, but it's so different from the Old Testament that many people think it should be called the New Testament, which is why we're here in this church. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Why are you trying to scare me? I've been around the theater my entire life. I know plenty of tricks to avoid stage fright and prepare for a role. Change the audience with my imagination. Crowd size varies like inauguration. Truth is not so sacred. I'll pretend that they are naked. <laughs> and I'll relax and not be so uptight. I'll focus on the music, not the fright. Don't be superstitious. 
It's just that the, the building is old and decrepit in need of renovation and air conditioning. I was fixing like a pig in that Maccabee costume. Well, guess what? It's not the building at all. And it wasn't just those stagehands that I caught, Big Ton and Payrex. They were working for Haman. That's right. It's been Haman this entire time. What? I thought it was just the building falling apart. I guess King won't need all that money for his renovations after. Well, actually, he still does. The building is falling down. But that's besides the point. What we need to do now is we need to stop Haman from ruining our production of a Hanukkah carol. And not only that, we, he's, he's, he's trying to get even with me for taking the lead role, and he's going to try and kick all of the Jews out of the production. We need to stop him. This is a job for a Maccabean queen. Are you with me? But how can we stop him? Don't worry, Esther. I think we'll do it together. You got this role for a reason. You know, Jews have a long and illustrious history in the Shushan Palace Theater. Matter of fact, Euripides was a Jew. <laughs> so was Aristophanes. Who else but a Jew would make a slave smarter than God? Yes, from Groucho to Woody, where would the theater be without the Jews? Esther, if the Jews are thrown out of the theater, don't think you'll be spared just because King doesn't know you're Jewish. He'll find out. You're right, Uncle Mordecai. We've got to stop him. I was born as Essie Rose and Glad, but I became Esther Rose Lady because I want to be a star. I learned to cover up my Hebrew name, hide it away. They say no one will cast you as you are, but now my Jewish heritage stays strong when.
catch him in the act. But it's going to take a village to pull this off. Everything Michael Cohen says is a lie. <laughs> Questions? Yes, Miss Sarah Huska Sanders. Did you say the Jews are behind the vandalism and the Shushan Palace Theater financial crisis? No, I did not. Yeah, but you just said, and I quote, the Jews have been sabotaging the theater. Really? Yeah. You said that just now. <laughs> did you know something we don't? You are the enemy of the people. You and possibly the Jews, if they are your sources, as you hinted. Okay. We are here to address the allegation that King's daughter, Ivanka, took all the capital campaign money to the Tchotchkes in Russia. Your statements about the Jews seem to be a distraction. And what is this about a wall? Well, a wall would restore confidence in the theater. Furthermore, until the theater is secure, it will be under a partial shutdown. And the ticket taker, Mordecai, is our essential employee, so of course he'll be working without pay. Uh, one more question. As a member in good standing who pays the dues every year on time, never questions the phrases each year. We're just wondering what these calls are about, the annual fund. <laughs> well, we try to keep the dues low, but they don't cover our operating expenses like staff salaries. So this leaves us with a deficit each year, and we depend upon the annual campaign to make up the difference and keep us solvent. What's going on here? I think they're talking about building a wall to keep the riffraff out. You know that the women are not happy. Makes sense, right? That way the show can go on without an annoying audience. <laughs> well, that's a great idea. Although the only audience I care about is an audience with the king of Saudi Arabia. You know, I must be some kind of genius. Hey, do you think that your dad can give me a security clearance? <laughs> Well, for the record, Director King wishes to state that he has everything under control and he's making sure that Shushan is great again. And that ends this bridge. <laughs> I've got it all planned out. By the time this rehearsal is over, I will chase all the people out of the theater. And then I will go to the capital campaign contributions, and I'll use them to build that wall. That's it. If I don't build my wall, then I am proud to say that the theater will be shut down forever. And the cost is $5.68 billion. The nicest thing about this is that everyone will think that King did it. Boss, I think that wall is a good idea. Like that famous, famous poet Robert Frost said, Persian poet Robert Frost said, good fences don't make for good neighbors. I don't want a fence, I want a wall. <laughs> Only a wall can guarantee theater security. <laughs> you idiot. Robert Frost was in Persian. He was from Vermont. So you know, French? <laughs> Why don't we have more French immigrants? I love spaghetti. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, we're rehearsing the reprise. Let's start from the second repeat. And I want to see those smiles. One, two, three.
So I just want to take a moment to say thank you once again to everybody who helped put this together, to Megan Beller on uh, music, to uh, sound, uh, Bobby Antonazzi was doing lights, and uh, uh, the Catclaw family was uh, big in, in, in creating the spiel this year, as well, of course, uh, Carol Burkauer, uh, our director extraordinaire. To, you know, whether the the shul or the church or whatever situation has managed to raise the production value of uh, our Purim spiel. So I want to thank again the whole cast, Yashikov, for an excellent job. Mike Chapman made his sound. Somebody turned on the camera. I don't know who. And. Uh, Oh, and Meg, Heim, uh, Meg Berman, who did the uh, costumes. Uh, and, uh, and our props were Bonnie Gromick, uh, Bobby, Bobby Antonazzi, uh, Bob and Kat Kopp, and Meg Berman as well. Um, so, and, and of course, Charles Ramelkamp and, uh, Char and Jesse Beller, who, and Charlie Beller as well. Thank you.